brothers and sisters, it's such a delight to interact with you today. Thank you ever so much for joining us. This is Healing Streams, the place where God's word transforms lives and destinies. I pray that God will touch every area of your life in Jesus name, amen. Today's topic is the power of focus. The power of focus. When this topic came to mind repeatedly, I thought it would be all about creating goals and plans and focusing on them. I was going to check in with you. How are you on track with your 2023 plans? But God had other ideas about this topic. I asked him, I said, what would you like your children to know about the power of focus? And I heard clearly, I want them to focus on me. I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to you as you listen to this session in Jesus name. Amen. The power of focus. How do we focus on the Lord when there's so much noise and distraction? Let's start with the definition of focus, the center of interest or activity. The dictionary also defines focus as the main or central point of attention. Synonyms or similar words to focus are emphasis, priority, concentration, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions. What are you concentrating on? What is your priority? Today's message is very simple. God is saying, focus on me. Matthew chapter 14. It was a stormy night. Jesus had gone to the mountain to pray. Initially, the disciples boat was on the other side of the sea. But by evening, the boat had moved to the middle of the sea tossed by the waves, for the wind was described as contrary. Jesus decided to go to the boat walking on the sea. The disciples were terrified when they saw him. Then Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. When Peter focused on Jesus, he walked on water. He dominated. He ruled over the circumstances. But when he lost focus, when he looked at the storm, when he looked at the wind, when he became afraid and started to sink. When you don't focus on God, you may be tossed by the waves. Storms will arise in everyone's life. But if we're focused on God, we will overcome the storm. And I pray that you will overcome every storm in your life. In Jesus name, Amen. When we focus on the right things, we will walk on water in the midst of a storm. Jesus rescued Peter. He restored Peter. God will rescue and restore you in Jesus name. Amen. What is the opposite of focus? Being distracted, preoccupied, inattentive, absent minded, even uninterested. In present day life, there's so many distractions. One may start the day with a particular plan and at the end of the day or at the end of the week and sometimes at the end of the month, the plan has not been actualized. Some of the distractions are out of our control, but many are within our remits, within our control. And what are these distractions? Jesus summarized some of them in Matthew chapter six. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Being unfocused or distracted drains our energy, drains our passion, drains our resources. But when we focus, we can channel our resources in the direction of our passion. If we focus on the wrong things, the things that God is not asking us to focus on at that time or in that season, we do not get the desired results. This can lead to despair, despondency, depression, sometimes hopelessness. Peter lost focus and then he began to sink. 
But do I hear you say, I can focus on many things at the same time. I can multitask. Research shows that for most people, multitasking tends to deliver suboptimal results. The impact is not maximized if a person is spread out in many different directions. Jesus was clear about what he would want us to focus on. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 34. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your Father in heaven, he knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. But I have house rent to pay. What about my children's school fees? Let's use the Bible as our guide. As we seek Jehovah Jireh, everything else will be taken care of. God has promised to take care of your needs. Matthew 6, 25 to 30. Therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one hour to the length of his life? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and the wildflowers of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory and his splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? I do suspect that God has asked me to share this message because we become distracted. We may be praying more, but are we really connecting with God? We may be attending more online services, but is it all about our needs? Is our relationship with God mostly transactional? Do this for me, do that for me. I will praise you so I can get more from you. God is saying, get back into the intimate place with me. Many of us are not at peace. We're distracted by global events, national disruption, local events. Life has changed. It's not business as usual anymore. And God is aware of this, yet he says, focus on me. Isaiah 26 verse 3, I will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on me because you trust in me. When we focus on God, the provision comes. Luke chapter 5, Jesus got into Peter's boat so that he could teach the people. At the point Jesus encountered Peter, they had given up the possibility of ever catching fish that night. They were already washing their nets. Luke chapter 5 verse 4 to 8, when Jesus had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered, Simon Peter, answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats. So they both began to sink. So when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. When Peter focused on the needs of Jesus, when Peter allowed Jesus to use his boat, God made provision for him. The expert fisherman caught fish at a time when it was least likely. God is saying, focus on me. Don't focus on the provision. Don't focus on your needs. Don't focus on the fish. I will take care of you. Many of us 
are concentrating on the fish. And there is a tendency, I must admit, to do that. Focus on God. The fish will come. The benefits will come. We can be confident about that. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Matthew 7, 17, 11. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Is there a man among you whose son would ask for bread and you would give him a stone or ask for a fish? Will you give him a serpent? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? The fish, the clothes, the shelter, the money, the prosperity, the fame, the fortune is not the most important. Seeking the kingdom of God is the most important. Luke chapter 5 verse 9 to 11. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter. And Jesus said to Peter, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. They gave everything up. They gave up everything and they followed him. What is competing with God in your life? Is it fame? Is it fortune? Is it money? Is it career? Is it business? Is it family? Take your eyes off those things and trust in God today. God is the source of all supply. How do we focus on God? We focus on who God is. We focus on what God can do. God's power, his strength, his love, his loving kindness. We focus on God's promises. We focus on his unfailing nature, his steadfastness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. We focus on God's mercy. His mercy never comes to an end. How do we focus on God? We focus on what God has called us to do. We focus on what God wants us to achieve. We focus on that specific assignment that he has for us. For Peter, he was called to be a fisher of men. He was called to be an evangelist. It would be so sad to get to heaven and find that even though you're a brilliant lawyer, God wanted you to be a missionary at some stage in your life. Focus on God. Maybe he wants to move you to a higher spiritual level. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. How do we focus on God? By hoping in him, by trusting him, by building our faith. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. Matthew 14 verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Jesus also spoke about little faith in Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Now, if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not clothe you, O you of little faith? We build our faith as we focus on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand, the right hand of the throne of God. Other versions say, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Focus on 
Jesus. We're talking about building our faith. We can build our faith by remembering what God has done for us in the past or by listening to other people's testimonies. We can build our faith by meditating on the word of God, the Bible. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like the tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. We can build our faith by praying in the Holy Ghost, Jude 20, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. God would love if we could spend hours just praying in the Holy Ghost. It would actually make us calm and give us peace about all those things we're anxious about. It will also give divine insights and direction. Why don't you start with one hour today and build up from there? How do we focus on God? By avoiding worry, by avoiding anxiety. Matthew 6 verse 27 again. Which of you by being anxious can add one moment to his lifespan? How do we focus on God? We take our eyes off the distractions. Have you tried these things in the past and you've stopped doing them? Start again and see what God will do. Psalm 34 verse 8, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who trusts in him. There is power in focus. When you focus on God, you will walk on water, you will do amazing things, you'll be provided for, you'll have peace, you'll prosper, you'll be blessed. It goes on and on and on. Today we've touched on several kingdom principles, but I'll just highlight one or two. Focusing on God unleashes God's power to do what he has said, which is that other things will be added onto you. God will keep you in perfect peace when you focus on him and trust in him. When Peter obeyed kingdom principles, the fish came into his net. When he obeyed kingdom principles, he walked on water. When he embraced kingdom principles, he entered into his divine destiny. Kingdom principles, very often, they don't make sense to the logical mind, but they trigger spiritual activity in line with God's plans and purposes. Yes, please do whatever God asks you to do. Peter obeyed, he let down his net. It may be simple, pray for an extra hour, or it may be unusual. Be intentional about focusing on God, on God and not the fish. Focus on the giver and not the gift, and God's miracles will manifest. God's power will manifest to bring about his glory and his plan and his purpose. But do I hear you say, how can I survive without the fish, without the provision? God is your source and your help. Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. Are you in any type of trouble? Have you toiled all night and caught nothing? Is your work not yielding the desired result? Can I ask you to come to Jesus today? Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all of you who are weary and loaded down with burdens, and I will give you rest. You can accept Jesus Christ and change the course of your life and destiny. Right here, right now, by saying this prayer with me, and the prayer is visible on the screen. Please let us pray. Almighty God, I confess that I have done things my own way. Going forward, I choose to do things your way. I accept your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Savior and as my Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my life. If you said that prayer, you've joined or rejoined the family of God, or you have reaffirmed that you belong to God. Congratulations if you've just joined God's family. To continue your Christian journey, please join a Bible believing church. In addition, please send a message to the number on your screen, 0708 225 6051, stating, I gave my life to Christ. If you're outside Nigeria, the number is plus two three four 
708-225-6051. We'd like to help you navigate the next steps. The title of today's message, The Power of Focus. I would like us to take some prayer points together, and there are quite a number, so please follow on the screen. Prayer point number one. My Father, please help me to focus and concentrate on you. Help me to focus on what matters. Let me make you my priority. Help me to seek the kingdom of God above all things. Let my divine assignment be my area of emphasis. In Jesus' name we pray. Prayer point number two, Heavenly Father, please use my boat. Help me to focus my energy, my passion, my resources on you. Let me use my resources for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer point number three, O oh Lord, save me. Rescue me from every storm against my life and destiny. Restore everything that I have lost due to lack of focus. Restore every lost opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer point number four, James chapter one, verse five to eight. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Don't let that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. That person is a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let's lift up our voices and say, grant me wisdom, O Lord. Instruct me, tell me when to launch out into the deep. Tell me when to cast my net into the sea. Lord, I treasure your divine guidance. Help me to obey your divine instructions. Banish worry, anxiety, unbelief, double-mindedness and doubt from my life. Help me not to worry about the cares of life. I put my trust in you, almighty God. Prayer point number five, Father, help me to concentrate on you, the giver and not the gifts. As I focus on you, let all other things be added unto me. My heart's desires, health, wealth, favor, mercy, grace, peace, joy. In every area I have toiled, let me have a net breaking catch in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number six are your personal prayer requests. I would like to agree with you in prayer. Matthew 18 verse 19 tells us if any two persons shall agree in the name of Jesus, it shall be done by our Father. Please lift up your voices to Almighty God, the omnipotent God. Please lift up your requests. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious promises. We are thankful that when we pray, you answer us. I agree with all those listening to me right now that their prayers will become testimonies and those testimonies will begin right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for praying along with me. And as we pray further, please feel free to type amen in the chat box. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you will continually focus on God. God will grant you perfect peace. You will overcome every storm. You will walk on water. You will dominate. You will rule over circumstances. You will not sink. You will not fail. You will be victorious. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Please join me next Saturday at 8 a.m. West African time for the next edition of Healing Streams. Please like this video and share it. Bless someone today. You might even win a soul. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel you're watching, COD House of Favor or Healing Streams with Femi Pitar. Kindly invite your friends and family to subscribe also. Click the bell icon so you'll be notified when Healing Streams is on air. Thanks to our Facebook family for joining us today. You can also follow Healing Streams with Femi Pitton on Instagram. 
at Healing Streams with Femi Fitzon. You can view all the videos in one place. You can view back episodes without scrolling through months and months of material. It's been such a joy interacting with you today. And may the healing streams of peace, joy, mercy and love flow towards you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom.